Uh, who is this from the 510? Hello. Hey, Brody. This is uh, Casey, A's Raiders Dub Sharks. Once oh, again. What's up? you're back. What's going on? You haven't gone on your month-long sabbatical yet. I have not. I'm preparing <laughs> right now. Oh, really? I'm leaving. In, yeah. Yeah, a couple weeks. Well, four weeks about. So, yeah, it's going to be going to be interesting How, how's sure. the uh Maybe. how's the future uploads of uh the loads of uploads i should say you're trying to make a bunch of videos while you're gone right for your channel right yeah i have it all mapped out so nice. basically in the past couple of months i made a video on every single one of my team's championships starting with the 1910 philadelphia a's world series and ending with the 2018 warriors championship wait so what do um, you say about the 1910 philadelphia a's what do you even find <laughs> information or what i guess it's the internet yeah. obviously but like how, yeah. how far do you go into that what do you say yeah yeah so basically i mean like you, you basically said it like the internet but what i do is like the night before i make the video i go on a, like kind of extensive research and kind of figuring out like who was the good who were the good players at the time okay um what were some interesting quirks about the series or like what was going on it, it was it, i learned a lot like you know, figuring wow. these out and going through all nine A's World Series, making like an eight minute video on each. That's really um, cool. It was, it was fun. Have you got yeah. to have you got to eighty nine yet? Or so you've you've made all these videos or you just yeah. done Okay. Oh so did you like eighty nine? <laughs> yeah. Eighty nine was definitely the best one to do, um, for sure. And so like you could find those on my channel, but now what I'm thinking is for this sabbatical I'm going on. Yeah. I'm just gonna I know it's gonna suck, but I'm gonna do all the like why not? I'll do all the losses, I guess. So I'm gonna start oh. with whatever their first loss was, would like it was early in the nineteen hundreds, I don't know, but yeah, do all the losses and then because then I can include the sharks because like sharks never won a Stanley Cup, unfortunately. And I wanna make a video about the two two thousand sixteen uh Stanley Cup. Ooh. So yeah. I, li- I lived that lost. one. It, w- it was rough. Well, you know what? I think yeah. what what there's a couple things that, and and you're obviously old enough to remember it. It wasn't that long ago, but yeah. um, there was two things about it. Number one is that it came on. I felt like it came on so fast. You get through the first couple rounds, yeah. and then you beat Nashville, and then you're right there. You're there in the final. The other thing that was kind of, and I'll say this, and I hope people understand it. And you're you're a Warriors guy too, but it was frustrating that it came in the same year where the Warriors were simultaneously in the NBA Finals against Cleveland. Um, frustrating, not, yeah, I know. Not from a, a Bay Area perspective, it was great to have two teams in the championship at the same time. But um, I wish the Sharks were on the stage all by themselves. In retrospect, I really do. Um, I think it would have lasted yeah, longer, yeah, sure. and I obviously wish the result were different too. But so, yeah. And it's a shame because, like, that was kind of my first taste of, like, Sharks fandom because I've, I've liked the A's, Raiders, and um, Warriors, like, a lot. Like, I guess I wouldn't say significantly longer than I've liked the Sharks, but I guess I was more exposed to the A's, Raiders, and Warriors just sure. because, like, they're more, they're more local to me. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, the, that Sharks team was, like, very it was eye-opening because I didn't really see hockey as, like, at the same level as the other sports until mm-hmm. I like kind of got watching. I started watching, you know, I think the first really glimpse of it was that season, like against the LA Kings, the, I think it was the first round and just seeing like, wow, these guys can play. And it was just, it was, I think it was like the same week when the sharks and warriors well, maybe the same couple of weeks when they lost. Oh yeah. Uh, both their respective finals. So yeah, it was, it was tough. Yeah. Sure. Well, I, I just mean from an, like an attention standpoint, you know, it, it was finally yeah. after, uh, and I think that was the thirtieth. No, no, sorry. It was that. That was the twenty fifth season. Um, yeah. Or that. Or that was the twenty sixth. Twenty sixth season. I think. Why can't I say that? Twenty sixth season. Um, but the point is, yeah. yeah. I just. I wish it were commemorated a little bit differently. And obviously, like I said, the result could have gone better too. But it just happened so fast. Uh, anyway. Sure. But yeah, it, it, that was. And and now you kind of play the waiting game of. Well, how long will it take before they ever get that chance again? You know, it, it only took you 25, <laughs> 25 years to get the first one. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. And anyway. Like these other teams that kind of have come up in the same era, and of course Vegas making it in their first year. And, yeah. Um, well, Anaheim, like Anaheim did it really yeah. fast. Tampa, yeah, there was a lot of expansion-type yeah. teams from the 90s that already, already did it. Uh, you know, in, in baseball, like Florida Marlins were the same way. Uh, it seems, seems like it happened yeah, so quick sure. and easy for them. So, uh, yeah, even for, for sure. Las Vegas, even for the Golden Knights to be, I don't think this was a big enough story when it happened for the Las Vegas Golden Knights to be in a Stanley Cup final 
in their inaugural season, even though they lost. Uh, if that were a football team in the Super Bowl in their first year, that would they would make a Hollywood movie about that. And in, in, in hockey, crazy. in hockey, it was kind of like, eh, it's a cool story, but it's not that big a deal. It's like, are you serious? Yeah. So even yeah, I, even I sure. recognize and, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, I, I had a question for you. I know, yeah. I, like you've done a lot of videos on the lockout and whatnot. I need to catch up, but um, my question for you, just from like a personal standpoint, is like how, like, I guess how or will it affect kind of your your job, I guess, because like you're obviously with media and broadcasting with, with baseball. Like, do you think it'll like, a, like if this walkout extends for an extended period, do you think it'll uh, like affect your ability to cover the A's or like outside of YouTube? Uh, well, I mean, let's yeah, be straight up. I mean, it, if there's no games, then there's no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing for Brazil to do yeah. on TV. Uh, but at the same yeah. respect, um, let me also state this, uh, the hockey season this year, goes till the end of April no matter what for the regular season. So there's there's a full month of crossover right. that I don't normally love because it's just uh I wish hockey would end at the beginning of April and I wish baseball would start at the beginning of April. And if we have playoffs, that's a good problem to have, but I don't like when the regular seasons yeah. cross over that for that long for about a month. Uh but they also did right. that last year too because right 56 games and the the pandemic season. So um to answer your question, does it affect my job? A uh, not that I know of directly. I mean, our our company and, and me personally have been through a 2020 baseball season, which was 60 games in 66 days. So there was a couple months yeah. before and after that. Then hockey didn't start until January of 2021. So basically from October till January, there wasn't much going on. Uh, fortunately, yeah. our company takes care of us really well and the situation is really good so that Things should be fine uh, for yours truly and all my colleagues. Obviously, too, I care about them, uh, but it's not optimal. Yeah. I got to be honest; it's it's not optimal that um, these two sides, the players and the owners, um, you know, for fans, it's not optimal because it doesn't it doesn't really go over well. Like fans don't want to hear about that stuff; <laughs> they just want the product. Uh, and obviously, yeah. those of us who are kind of bystanders of the business, like. Um, it's unfortunate that it would complicate our business, but it does. Uh, so there's no there's no right. way to lie about yeah. it. But uh, I don't think me personally, it has a direct a direct impact. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it was good hearing about that. And I, I just I I guess since I'm going on the sabbatical, I feel like I'm not super like concerned about the situation as much as I could or should be, just because like I know I'm gonna I would miss like spring training and. Uh, opening day regardless and I'm, I'm a huge Oakland A's attender like I go to spring training I go to like the opening week and whatnot so like I I kind of want it to get a tiny bit delayed so I can go but I'm gonna say <laughs> at the same time it's like it's, it's not good, optimal for the for the sport or the league so so yeah. I mean it's one of those things where I I think I think a shortening of spring training at this point is almost inevitable I mean they're they usually yeah. re- they usually report in the next week pitchers and catchers right February fourteenth or fifteenth, so I almost feel like that yeah. is that's inevitable that spring training is going to get cut down and that actually is I'm okay with that to a certain extent but it, if things don't get uh, kind of roped together by March first, uh, then you're talking about not having long enough to prepare and train for the season and get things orchestrated and also don't forget this. Teams don't even have their rosters set because they don't now they don't they don't know the cap yeah. situation. Is there going to be a hard cap, soft cap, different cap uh, than before? So all those trades that would have normally happened in the month of December with winter meetings and all that type of stuff, none of that happened. Well, some of it did, but but hardly any of it happened. So there are yeah. some teams that, as you see them right now, they're going to look totally different by whenever opening day 2022 is. So there's there's going to be a flurry of trades, transactions, maneuvers, things like that to go along with how much time do we even have to get this thing started. So I think March 1st is kind of the big yeah. cutoff date for does opening day happen on time. And then once you get past that, I mean, then you're running into, okay, are we shortening this thing by two weeks, by two months? There's a lot yeah. to be sorted out there. So Yeah, for sure. And it's just, I mean, I feel like with the, the whole, you know, roster situation, it's like, how do I feel as an A's fan as somebody who, you know, has to go through a lot of these trades usually happening this time of year? I mean, 
it's you, it happens every year where we lose most of our good players. And I know Matt Olson rumblings were going on right before the lockout hit. They uh, still are. <laughs> yeah, they still are. Yeah. It's like I remember seeing things like Matt Olson to the Yankees this week, and it, then the you know the lockout happens, and it's, yeah. so it's like I don't know how to feel. It's like is Matt Olson going to be or a guy like not just Matt Olson, but like our you know our staple players of are going to be intact. Yeah, I sure. think it's, I think this lockout has a bigger effect on a team like the A's who have a lot of questions surrounding their personnel for next year. You know, uh, fans are generally not thrilled with the lockout of potential of the season not happening on time, but A's fans are especially on edge because there's so much hinging on how this lockout gets resolved. Okay, now what does it mean yeah. for this team's future, their budget, their planning, the players that they may trade now, may trade later, may may sign now, because if there's a salary cap floor and you have to spend a certain dollar amount every year, well, why wouldn't you want to give that money to Matty O or, or Matt Chapman or Sean right. Manaya or Chris Bassett, whoever. So um, there's a lot to be to be figured out with this. And I don't mean just with the lockout. I mean how it relates and how it affects the Oakland A's. I think A's fans should should be kind of like edgy about this whole thing because – you don't know what it's going to mean for your team, but you know it's going to mean something pivotal for your team. Kind of like the stadium. It's right around yeah, the corner, sure. and when it happens, what does it mean for your team? Lockout's the same way. What does it mean for this team in the next couple of years? So, For sure. Yeah, and I mean, I think the salary cap floor thing, back to your point, it's just like I remember seeing you know sor- sources uh, report that the A's might go as low as $50 million, and it's just, you know, how long can we do this for? So I, I, you know, I'm just hoping, like, I, like you said, on edge about the yeah. whole situation, anxious. Well, what you know, if, what like if we need to keep these guys? What if they said the salary cap floor, and I'm, I'm just making up something. What if they said the floor is, uh, 91 million, which is crazy because the, <laughs> the seal, yeah. this that's greater than the ceiling of hockey. Uh, but what if they, what if they said it was 91 million? Okay, and you're to your point, you have to spend now. You have to spend an extra 30 or 40 million bucks this next year. What do you do? Well, I know what you do. <laughs> you you yeah. give it to your first yeah, and third baseman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's for much. sure. And I know that, I mean, I think honestly with that kind of money, the A's could be a, a deep playoff team considering that this year they hardly missed the playoffs and they had an 80 or so million dollar payroll. So yeah. I think that's a great point you brought up and it's just your salary cap as well, because not that wouldn't necessarily directly benefit the A's, but it would, prohibit teams like the Dodgers spending 300 million. So, right. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Well, and that's yeah. the thing, right? If you're going to go hard cap, it's not just the potential floor. You're right. It's the potential upper limit too, which doesn't let you exceed that. And I also think one more thing, and I know you'll appreciate this on the A's, you know, if you really are, yeah. if you really know you're going to get this Howard terminal in a couple of years, if you really know that for sure, you can start to plan your next cycle of players based around that. Um, now, yeah, granted, sure. I've, I've always hoped that Matt Chapman and Matt Olson are there on opening day. They're a huge part of that team. But, but I mean, if this stadium doesn't open until 2027, well, guess what? They debuted in Major League Baseball in 2017. <laughs> They're 10-year <laughs> yeah. veterans at that point. So, I mean, it, right. you got to be realistic and say, okay, this, th- this stadium is not going to happen in 2024. It's just not. So... Um, yeah. Back in 2017, if if you thought 24, okay, great, Chappie and Oli in their prime, but it may not work out to be that way. So uh, the lockout, right. the lockout yeah. affecting the A's, the stadium affected. There, there is so much up up in the air with this team right now. For sure. Yeah, and kind of a closing point. I think you know for sure that the A's. I, I know the stadium is definitely a huge priority, but I think if they could win something before the stadium, it would generate a lot of excitement. You know because. <laughs> This new stadium, it's it's really going to change and revolutionize baseball in Oakland for for generations yeah. to come. I know that's that's obvious. You know, it's like look at San Francisco, look at San Diego. It's changed so much, and I think if you have a winning team, if you have a, a World Series to celebrate going into Howard Terminal, not just after it, you have sort of that built up fandom that you know will stay there intact. Hopefully, sort of like kind of what the Warriors were with Chase Center. Well, here's so. here's my million dollar question and you you bring up a good point about yeah. how the Warriors did it. They won championships in the old building and then that kind of that kind of built the that kind of built the new building to be honest. But would you rather yeah. ha- hypothetically, if let me just I'll say the A's the A's can win two World Series in 3 years. I don't know what years those are. Would you rather have them win two World Series in their final 3 years at the Coliseum or 
Would you rather have them win two World Series in their first three years at Howard Terminal? And tell me why. Which one and why? Okay. <clears throat> okay. From a fan standpoint, I would rather have the Howard Terminal just because if you're thinking about it logically, the, the final Coliseum years are like critical, but they would already probably have the, the you know, broken ground and whatnot. Yeah, of and course. So that would be kind of, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And I feel like just at Howard Terminal, the whole experience, you know, a parade in Jack London Square. Yep. I just feel like from a fan, aesthetically, yep. like fantasizing about it, yep. it would just be such a cool experience. And I don't know. I just feel like, you know, winning in that in that building, just seeing the renderings, it would just be like magical moment. You know, just two world, you know, when you bring up two world series, it's just like larger than life sort of. Yeah, sort of and I, I, I just, it's, it's not something, honestly, I had thought about in, until you called in and we were talking about this, but... I just I, I think there is such a thing for a lot of teams to build momentum going into a new building, whether whether it's any sport, uh, basketball, football, yeah. baseball, hockey. But I think there's also I think the 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 peak thing you can do is to win as soon as you move in because that that yeah. sets a tone for that building, the atmosphere, what it, it christens the whole new environment. So. Uh, right. I don't know. I, th yeah. I think to your point, some sure. people say you got you got to be winning before you get there, like the Warriors did. Well, okay, yeah. and they're winning again, so it's not a problem <laughs> problem right now. But <laughs> yeah. but I think the the pinnacle thing to do is to win as soon as you get in, not before, but as soon as you get in. So yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think that's critical for your fandom and for yeah. your your future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, it was great talking to you. Uh, I hope I talk to you again before your yeah. your trip. I don't know when that is coming up, right? But, uh, but yeah, March for uh, March fifth, I think. Okay, yeah. well, I'll, I'll be streaming before then. I got a feeling we'll we'll talk before then. So thanks for uh, thanks good. for thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you. You too. All right, no, have a good catch one. Catch you later. That's uh, A's Raiders Dubs Sharks. By the way, young man runs his own uh, channel. Does you know really cool videos. I will not be surprised when he is working. In my business someday, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he can he can push me around in the wheelchair to the studio. <laughs> uh, that'd be something. But uh, yeah, you can tell it when when young people, you know, this is what they want to do, and and they're into it, and they've got all the right effort and yeah, energy, and he's definitely got it. So uh, he's always always impressed me. Uh, let's go back 